Hey people, I got a little project that I want to do and I want to explain what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Uh, if you go back a couple videos ago, um, I know it's been a while since I did a video. I've just been really busy working on the Airstream and um, compiling videos for that is taking a long time. Plus, you know, normal life, regular job. Most of y'all know what I'm talking about. So anyhow, get back to what I was talking about. A few videos ago, I did this uh, attic lift. Uh, it's a 500 pound attic lift. It's, I don't know if I can go back far enough, but it's a pretty big size attic lift. Um, I showed you how to frame it out and everything. Now, this is made by a company called Aladdin and I'm very impressed with it. The only thing I don't like about it, if you watch the video, is it's pretty slow going up and down. But recently I got an email saying that Aladdin came out with a wireless controller. Because if you can see with mine, I have the key up there on the ceiling. The only way I could fix that, if I wanted to, would be to run over to that wall and then maybe bring it down over there or take it between the um, garage doors. The problem is getting through the header that's above there to run the wiring there or there because that's an outside wall. Um, it was, it was just, it would just be a pain. Now I couldn't get all the way over there because the wiring isn't long enough for the key. It's pretty long, but I don't think it'll make it all the way to there. I have another wall over there, but that's also an outside wall getting to the header. It's just too much of a pain. So I decided I'll just leave it up there and I'll just use a little, you know, a little step ladder, stand on top of it to bring the uh, lift down. But they came out with this wireless controller for this lift that makes everything so much easier. The problem, they want $450 for this wireless controller. And I'm thinking that's, that's extreme. That's, that's like, I don't know, a quarter of the cost of the entire lift. I think the lift was like two grand. I'm trying to remember how much it was, maybe 2,400. Um, so no, I can't do that. So I used to be a uh, four-wheel guy, you know, I did a, I built a, an off-road Jeep. Um, it was kind of like a passion of mine for about, well, a long time. And uh, I thought about it and I said, well, the only thing these lifts, the only thing that make these lifts different than winches on a truck is the truck. And this is nothing but a winch that goes in and out like the ones in your Jeep. So, I went on Amazon and for 17 bucks I bought the same controller that I bought for my Jeep. Well, I used to have my Jeep. I sold my Jeep. Um, but anyhow, I bought one of these. It was 17 bucks. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to wire this up and get it to work. Uh, some things you'd need to understand this system for the Aladdin lift That key controller up there. It runs off 24 volts. So you need to make sure this is the model that I got uh, Let's see if I can get a better look at it turn it around Here's the, well, I got, it back. I got it upside down Here's the model and as you can see it's 12 or 24 volts um, to make sure, I'm going to use my trusty multimeter, DC, and uh, meter out the connection for the controller to make sure that it's 24 volts or less. Uh, anything more, you can damage the controller, and uh, we don't want to do that. But this also has a little, little keychain controller. In and out be the same as up and down. In would be up, down would be out. So, let me uh, take care of a couple things first. So we have to fix the wiring 
and set it up to wire it in because I'm going to wire it in with the with the key controller. So I can use the key if I wanted to. If like say the battery goes dead on the controller, then I can go up and use the key. All right, so there's a couple things I need to cover. Number one, Aladdin has a five year warranty on their lift, but their warranty says it needs to be installed by a certified carpenter and an electrician. I don't know why you couldn't do it yourself if you, you know, did it right. Um, but it also says any alterations or modifications may void the warranty. So I don't know if this could void the warranty. Mine works fine. I'm willing to take that risk. The question is, are you willing to take that risk? So with that set up front, you need to be aware that this could void your warranty uh, on your lift. I like it. All right, so here we have, here we have our controller. Um, if you look in the directions, it gives you a nice set of directions. And it shows you that it's, it's nothing but a winch controller, which that's all this is. Um, this one runs off of 110, but the controller runs off of 24 volts. Remote runs up to 75 feet. There should be plenty of room. I'm just going to attach some Velcro to the back and then maybe stick it to my toolbox or stick it to the wall or something like that. But we need to, this blue wire, that's the antenna. And then if you look at the um, instructions, it's got the white wire is your out. The yellow wire is the in. And then of course black is ground and red is power. So first thing I'm gonna do So we don't need these. We're going to cut these off. So we want to put the spade connector on, on our uh, controller. All right. So now that I got these all got connectors on them, we're going to use these. Uh, what these allow you to do is to snap into a wire and then when you use a pair of pliers and snap it down the wire the wire goes into inside that little blade there cuts through the insulation makes connection and then your little spade connector goes into that little thing through the plastic so that's how it makes the connection this actually snaps in through here so now i gotta go up into uh basic hell heat of the attic to um hook these up uh we need to make sure that we get power and ground which up there it's uh i think it's red and white and then what well, might be red and black um and then there's two different, two other wires for the up and down that go to the key. So that's what we've, that's what I've got to get the directions. Uh, I'll print that out and show you here in a minute to make sure we hook this up right. We want to make sure that our white wire, which is out, goes to the down. And then our yellow wire, which is in, goes to the up. All right, so here's the plan. I was gonna wire it up in the attic, uh, the controller, but I had all kinds of problems getting the right, um, getting the right enough room to get this stuff. So I'm going to, if I can, 
get me just enough room to tear it out. I'm going to take this little bit of insulation off. And this is right behind the key. This is all four wires accessible. And um, get this stuff off. There. So I got all four wires, and I know where my drawing here with this. And you look at the connector, and then you look at this drawing on the other side to see how the connector goes. So if I have this on, I should be able to take my meter. I should be able to go white which according to this is 24 volts which is this end and then black which should be ground right wow that's 32 volts So I think I need a 32 volt winch controller because I'm getting 32 volts from this even though in the drawing it says here 24 but uh, I don't I don't think that's correct so see if I can find me a 32 volt winch controller Okay, so this ain't gonna work. So, cause it's only up to 24 volts. So, I found this on eBay. I'm mean, not on eBay, on uh, Amazon. And it is a two channel controller. So I'm gonna give it a try, cause it goes up, it goes from zero to 48 volts, 12 to 48 volts. So we're gonna give this a try. So, what I'm going to do, one, according to the directions, I need to wire up for what they call momentary, which means you hit the button, and as long as you hold the button in, It'll keep moving. You let go of the button, it stops moving for in and one for out. So, what we want to do, we got to figure out which one is which. So, I'm going to all right. So, let's see. Key, we should have down. What do we do? Stop, up. All right, moment of truth. Remote, A. Nothing, that may be up. Try B. Still nothing. Ooh, the way this is going, it's like I got no power. Let's see. So this portion of the video 
I'm doing a lot of testing to find out why I got no power. And basically realizing that the connections using those crimp wire connectors, they weren't making a good enough connection. So I had to go through and redo every one of them. love these things. These things work really good for soldering connections. So, I think our best bet, because uh, my problem is I'm not getting a good connection. So I, I like these two. These are to connect wires but you gotta really, you gotta really get the small ones. I think that these red ones are the ones I need. So I should still get This is your, this is my main power here. With that, and then this is my ground. Okay, that showed me I got voltage. So let's see. <laughs> Check it out. So now I got a remote. Put the link to this controller in, in the uh, comments. But, uh, and then you can see. So here's the controller. And it has a little, has a little door that folds up. And I'll have to, just like that. And I'll, I'll wrap some electrical tape on everything and it'll go it'll go up inside the um, where the key goes so it'll go up inside where the key goes and now I'll be able to sit down here go down So, uh, I think this was like 15 bucks, 14 or 15 bucks for this controller. Um, it is a, comes with two wireless controllers. Where's the other one? Here's the other one. You can see that one works too. And um, has multiple settings in it. What they call um, 
the one setting you want is the one that they call uh, momentary. <laughs> it's Chinese. Chinese trying to figure out how English goes. And that that is the wiring right there. And so what what I've basically done, let me go ahead and open this back up. I gotta get me a where's my little flathead screwdriver. No, I just I just had one. Cause I there it is. So we'll pop this open. Let me show you. So it's got a little tab here, a little tab here. And there's it opens. And so basically what I did is I ran a power wire, which is to the first the first two connections is power and ground source. So when you have your key, you have the power wire, the power wire, which is the white one, coming up to uh, the connector. It doesn't go all the way through, it just supplies power up to here, which is the 32 volts. This uh, does 12, I think it's 12, 24, up to 30, 32 or 36 volts and 48 volts. Then you have a your up and down, which is the white and yellow, which is going to the green and the red, and you run them to the next channel. So you have three connectors for one channel and two channels. You don't worry about the first one, which is marked NC2, NC1, NC2. You don't worry about the first uh, connector. You worry about the second and third. So the middle one is the ground and the middle one is the ground here. So you pigtail three grounds, uh, two grounds off of each one of them, make a little pigtail and connect that to either one of the ground wires. There's two ground wires going to the um, uh, key, going to, the, going to the key connector, the key switch. So you'll, you, you can pick either one of them, it doesn't matter, they're both good grounds. And so we pigtail the ground for power and the ground for each channel all together to one. I mean, I could have run this over here, hooked them all together maybe wire nutted them all together. I'm not, I don't know, I could have, but I didn't. <clears throat> and then you have the yellow going to red and green going to white. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take myself some electrical tape and I'm gonna clean all this up. I want First thing I want to do is to clean up these grounds. I love these connectors, Wacos, but uh, I don't leave them exposed. I always cover them up and tape them together. Number one, to make sure that they don't accidentally come apart. And number two, just to keep them together. Next, uh, these connectors we don't have to tape up. But what I do want to do is I want to tape all of these together into a little bundle that's going to go together that goes through the the little port on the controller just to keep them all together. There you go. Then I can close this up and that's it. Now this is going to go up inside the um, where the where the keyhole is. 
see if I can get this over here and then point this up to where the keyhole is. So, All right, so what I had to do is I had to extend the wires because I have to, I have to actually run the wiring into the, the box. But now that I messed with the wiring, I want to, uh, verify continuity and make sure everything's working like it should. There we go. So now we're going to run all of our wires through here. We got this ground wire way right back here. The white one. And the red one. everything fits and I'm gonna hook it all up again and the power hooked up B is down A is up so that's the way I want it I'm gonna lock this down I'm going to need to put this up into the ceiling. Bring this down. And now we need to do a full test. So. All right, so first thing we still need our backup. So let me test with my key. Comes down good. Back up. Once it gets enough tension, when it gets all the way up, it automatically shuts off. So let's try our remote. So now I don't have to climb up on the ladder. Just keep holding the remote, the down button, and uh, I don't have to pay 450 bucks. And then when I'm done, let go of it, it stops, hit the A button. And there you have it. So if you like what you see, like, subscribe, give me a comment. I don't see how anybody wouldn't like this. Instead of paying 450 bucks and you don't have to climb up on the ceiling to use the key. Just grab this out your pocket. Shuts off automatically. Done. You guys have a good one.